Pressure cookers are wonderful little things and this recipe is designed to show you how a pressure cooker can take a dish that would normally take about three hours and we can get it done in about 45. So the basic rule with pressure cookers is three to one. So whatever would normally take three, you can get done in one. And because I'm so damn good, we can get it done in 45. Now when I say damn good, what I mean by that is the recipe, not me in particular. So pressure cookers are wonderful. Treat them like you would a normal stock pot or something that you're going to slow cook in. So we get some heat in there first, we're going to brown off our pork. And I'm using pork shoulder. Pork shoulder has a lot more flavour, the shoulder itself does a lot more work, but it needs to be cooked for a long time to make it tender, so about three hours. So once we get some heat into our pan, I'm going to put in a little bit of our garlic infused canola, and just fry that off until I get some good colour on my pork, and then I'll take it out and then I'll start to build the rest of it. So you may have noticed that I put the cooked pork back in the bowl that the raw pork was in. And you're probably yelling at your TV screen saying, don't do that, don't do that, you should know better. It's okay, I'm gonna put this back into the pot and we're gonna cook it out. The only time that would be a problem is if I was taking this bowl to the table to serve guests or customers. You would probably kill them and that's not a good thing. So if you are cooking it off again, you can use the same bowl. You don't have to create a huge mess in the kitchen and use new bowls every time. But make sure you're cooking that meat off again. So onion first, pop that in. With a sprig of rosemary, I'm gonna pop in there some chorizo with that. And I'm gonna use the fat that we render out of the chorizo to help cook the onion. Get some heat into that. And then while that's going along, we're gonna to start to put in our spices. So I've got some smoked paprika, the same spice that's in chorizo. So just reaffirming the flavors that are in chorizo. Then some garlic. So next in is the tomato paste, and we put that in now because we need to cook it out. Raw tomato paste can be quite astringent. You wanna caramelize the sugars and let it mellow a little bit. So the pork gave us that savory sweet. Now we're gonna add some sweet and sour. So some sugar, just a teaspoon of caster sugar some vinegar for that sour component, and then some red wine, which gives you a sour bite as well. So we'll pop that in and we'll cook that out. I'm just gonna let this reduce a little bit just to intensify all those flavors that are in there. And I'm gonna put half of my olives in now. So I've got a handful of olives. I'm gonna put half a handful in now just to help add some seasoning, some salt. So we've got sweet, sour, salt. We're starting to build all those flavors that you want. And the other half I'm gonna hold off and pop them in right at the end on top of the dish. At this point, we can pop our pork back in. So this is where it's okay. It's going back in, it's gonna get cooked off again. So that goes in. Some oregano, well, fresh or dried, it doesn't matter. I've got some fresh oregano. Another stir. Then a can of crushed tomatoes. So Ardmona, good Australian tomatoes farmed by Australian farmers. They go in, another stir. And you can do any sort of flavor you want. You can do it with beef, you can do it with lamb, pork, chicken, it doesn't matter. Pressure cookers are great for this sort of meal. And this is a great midweek meal. It's really, really tasty and really, really simple. Then some stock. Now we just want to bring the stock level up to cover what's in there so the pressure cooker can do its work. That's probably two cups, I reckon. And then one more stir and that is it. So we've got a nice amount of liquid in there and what the pressure cooker does is when we put the lid on it, here's your little science lesson for the day. We put our lid on, close it up and lock it, turn the pressure on and what pressure does so if you think of particles that are in water or in steam, as the water turns to steam, the particles move away. So at 100 degrees, that happens. If you've got pressure pushing the particles together, it takes more energy for those particles to turn to steam and move away. So the water can boil at a much higher temperature. So we can get the water in there well above 100 degrees to cook our food in, which is why it cooks faster. So this has got about 40 minutes, I reckon. Then we can open it up, reduce the sauce down, and we have our beautiful braise. There we go, 45 minutes later and you've got a three hour braise and it's beautiful. Now on MasterChef, we had mainly one hour challenges. So if I wanted to create a dish like this, I always needed a pressure cooker, so I love them. 
Another little tip with a pressure cooker though, if the recipe calls for a tablespoon, add a tablespoon and then a little bit more. Because it's not cooking for that three hours, you don't get the same amount of flavour at the end. So that little tip might just help you.